Okay, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all want videos? Here comes another one. Hey, listen, I know the videos are like sporadic and stuff like that, man. When when you're out there working the load board, man, like even OTR, you know, there's just so only so many hours during the day. You know what I mean? I mean, like our first order of business of the day is like trying to make profit right trying to survive in this crazy world you know what i mean that's the main thing right so um really as much as i want to do videos man it's like sometimes it just becomes in the back burner you know it's nothing against you know what i mean anybody it's just that you know we gotta make money right but like check it out check it out we got us a new toy we got us some new mud flaps as well those freaking ones we got from Fleet Pride, they didn't last long, man. Like one gust of wind freaking took them out. you're wondering I did get this from Amazon and that's what it looks like right there what I like about this is different from when you get it from the rest of the truck stop because you got a different key set on it so I think it was like 30 something dollars maybe 40 bucks for that I like it but for now we have to say goodbye to our trailer hopefully the trailer is still intact when we get back <laughs> <laughs> you may be asking, man, why are you leaving a perfectly good intact trailer, perfectly like almost literally brand new trailer into a dirt lot to go do some Amazon? Good question. Well, I was able to get a hold of this one guy, right? He's uh He's like an internal broker for Amazon. He does work for Amazon. So he dispatches out those loads that are not, um, what you call it, that are not coming or going on the load board, okay? So you got contracts with Amazon, you got dedicated lanes with Amazon, and then you got a load board with Amazon as well. So uh, anything that's not going on to the load board, these guys handle and they, uh, you know, uh, what you want to call it, they find carriers and then they set them up and do all of these other things, you know, because everything in Amazon is automated. So like when, when they set something up, when it comes to, you know, load board or stuff like that, all of that is like, it was preset by somebody behind a computer. Now, if a load say, uh, it's a live unload or whatever that requires a little bit more you human interaction you know what I mean so and that's what the load that we are on right now and like I was saying I don't um, I when I first got the trailer if y'all remember I was saying that I would like to stay at home more often and I believe that a step deck would allow me to do that you know um, that's why I was like you know what let me get a step deck and with ramps and stuff like that and then let's see let's see where it, that takes us you know I wish they would fix this doggone road over here anyway so that's what we're on right now this kind of load we're gonna be running a load for this guy and let's just see let's see right we might be able to build a relationship with this guy and it might come out good you know we don't know let me see let me go check in with amazon it might make me take a picture yeah so you can't be there more than 30 minutes before arrival time all right we've got the trailer listen when y'all doing amazon man 
check your stuff. Make sure you check everything. This one should be good. It's a freaking brand new trailer, it looks like. But what I mean by that is you gotta crawl underneath man, and check those wheel seals. Trust me, this is the second time I'm picking up for this broker or with this particular load, Amazon load. It's a, gonna be a live unload, but the last one that I was supposed to be picking up from here actually had three wheel seals leaking. How is that possible? Like three at the same time? You know what I mean? Check your seals, seals look good. Flashes look good. I think this is gonna be a good trailer, but always check them anyway, you know? It's a brand new trailer. It's got, it's got oil, so, but always check them. Okay, situation, this is where flatbedders differ from, you know, a uh, box or reefer drivers. Look at this. I got a trailer to my right. I got somebody in my front that's too close. Basically, they got this freaking thing too close, you know? Best thing we can do is we got nobody on the left. We're just gonna go ahead and bust the left, even though we gotta go out there that way. We're just gonna go ahead and bust the left because the odds are we're gonna hit somebody if we try to go the other way. You gotta watch your encroaching too, you know? That tail, that tail swing. This place is just, they made it way too tight. So what we're gonna do, wow. Why does this, why does this feel like it's so heavy? It's not supposed to be that heavy. What we're gonna do, we're gonna take her down this way Actually, I don't got the right swing for it. So I'm probably gonna uh, swing out the trailer this way a little bit more. We're gonna back her out. And then we're gonna try to bring the trailer to my left a little bit more and then we're gonna make that Yui. Well, I don't think we can make a full UV there, but we do have a space right there. So we're gonna be able to go into that space, back it in and get out of here. Man, this thing is supposed to be listed at 10,000 pounds. I think what's happening is they got most of it loaded to the front. It's too bad that we didn't, I didn't get to see how this thing is loaded, you know? Okay, we're gonna take her down this way. See, I'm not just a flatbedder, you know? I could, dri I could drive a van too, man. All right, the only thing I don't like about this uh, truck is the stinking uh, turning radius is not that good. Dang it. Look at this. I could have made that with a freight liner, that's for sure. Now, we're gonna take it this way. I think we're okay with the swing back there. You gotta watch your jackknife. See, it's a good thing we got this part right here. We would have, yeah, we're able to make it because of it. Okay. We didn't even have to back up the trailer back all the way back. She's good. Okay. Wow. But see, I see a lot of new drivers are struggling out here when it comes to that, it's rightfully so because you're new, you know what I mean? Uh, they would have made, try to bust that turn to the right instead of trying to go there, over to the left where it's more room. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about this load board, man. So when since we've been back, right? <laughs> been back uh, in Vegas, we were in Vegas, we got in Vegas like Saturday or something like that, right? 
and spent a whole week near here. It's Friday already. Took a little bit of vacay, you know, uh, like in town vacay. So went to the pool and stuff like that. But anyway, um, I've been watching the load board and man, I tell you what, it looking really, really, really spicy out here. You know, uh, Vegas, I saw a like a huge amount of volume coming out of there. You know, it's like almost double, which was kind of weird, but hey, you know what? I'm not complaining, you know? Uh, also, also, Southern California is looking really, really, really good. So, hey, you know what? Maybe, uh, maybe the hopes of sticking around the area, you know, maybe working regionally would actually work out after all. We'll see. This is my favorite part about California right here. Look at this. California is a beautiful state, man. There's, there's, there's a lot of things to do in California, you know? Very big state, but very, very busy state and very, very populated state. Look at that, 6%. 6% grade for the next six miles. That's insane. So like this load, if you look at the the stinking, my gauges, right? My suspension gauge, it's showing like we are pretty close to maxed out, which is like 34, right? But this son of a gun, it's uh, I, it's not even like on the BOL is showing 20,000, 20,900 pounds. So I'm guessing they got most of that weight up front. So they don't, they don't like got it spread out, you know? Yeah, the thing was sealed before we even got to it. That's one of the things I don't like about uh, the van side, you know, like especially with Amazon is like a lot of these trailers will be sealed or, you know, it can really like, you don't really got no saying on how that freight is arranged in there, you know? One thing about this truck though, ever since, ever since we ran the overhead and uh, adjusted the jakes, man, them jakes are working good, man. I actually have probably in another 15,000 uh, miles, we're gonna go ahead and uh, open her up again up top and There's have it, uh, okay, okay. And have the, readjust the doggone things again. Readjust the head and the engine brake, just to keep it nice and tight, you know? So let me talk a little bit about this load. So this load, what it what it is, is like, you pick up a trailer, right? You pick up a trailer in Las Vegas. It's not an Amazon facility. It's an offsite facility. It's a third party facility. And then you take that product, I don't even know what this product is. You take the product to another offsite facility that I don't know what they do over there. They process this product somehow or something like that. And then you live unload from that facility, right? And then you take the Amazon trailer to an Amazon facility. That's the whole load. So I've never done it before. Hopefully it goes pretty smooth. We will see. Based on what I'm seeing, it looks like uh, at the receiving end, they're only doing it by appointment. This road has been like this for many, many years, man. We're gonna go to the receiving end early anyway, I don't care. They said the app says not to come there 30 minutes prior to your appointment. I said, ah, man, I don't care. We'll just show up. Let's see. Oh, by the way, we are heading towards uh, this is going to be the next town we're going to see is going to be, or the next big town we're going to see is Bakersfield. And then we're going to pick up the 99. We're on the 58 right now. It's California 58. And then we'll pick up the 99 north. And then I should get us all the way to Stockton. You know, I just realized they have a sign that says 6% for the next six miles. But yet they don't have a doggone runaway ramp. <laughs> I guess if you're a runaway, you need to go that now that way. <laughs> Look at all that open field. You'll stop there somewhere. 
morning already man I tell you what this that load was a pain like the load itself wasn't that bad right it's only 20,000 pounds but at the delivery oh my goodness I don't know why they set up their location like that but it's way too tight man way way too tight man uh, I wish it was nighttime already I wish I had camera rolling but um, Anyway, it's just way too tight, man. This is, I, <laughs> I'm surprised not more people are hitting. Like, I guess, I think that's a common problem with like, uh, uh, when you're de delivering to grocery places, right? Grocery way warehouses or whatever, right? One thing that freaking uh, suck over there is that, you know, I know how that goes, man. Anybody that does frozen stuff, man, anybody that does, you know, unload frozen stuff. Everything is by appointment, right? Uh, they went over like two hours on the departure time. So I'm gonna have to discuss some of those, you know, uh, what do you call it? Some of those uh, detention time with uh, with the guy that we're dealing with. So, you know, I gotta change these things out, man, because every time I always gotta give it that hop. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about these loads. You know, you might be wondering, I haven't changed the mud flaps yet, but you might be wondering, like, if they have to be good, enable for me to drop the trailer, pay for the paid parking for the month, and do Amazon. They have to be doing good, right? Well, they are. Actually, this particular load paid good so how this thing works is the live unload part right the live unload part i guess it deters a lot of people from doing the load itself because <coughs> it's actual trucking you know you got to you got to but what you got to do is you have to get live unloaded right once you do that you also have well, actually, first, you got to get live loaded, and then you get live unloaded, and then um, you do the bills and everything, just like, come on. See, the thing, this is what I don't like about automatic. There you go. You can't do it like a manual transmission, you know what I mean? You just punch into the clutch, and then you manually put it in there. Now, automatic transmission has got relays and stuff, so... It's a little bit more sensitive but anyway so this load right you have to pardon the mess by the way I'm trying to reorganize everything in here so um, the load you gotta you gotta live unload once you get live unloaded you take the bills and then upload them to the app and everything so it takes a little bit more work and also it took them four hours to unload me which was crazy. Four hours to unload in a van, but like I said, it's a grocery store, you know? So, usually take a little bit longer, but. Okay, so, the load, right? Oh, we don't have a auto inflation on this one. We're gonna need the hammer. We're gonna need the hammer. Yeah. I'm trying to find a box back here to put back here. Where's my hammer? Just look at that. My chains are all over the place, man. I can't put those on the box on the trailer. They're just too heavy. So we're gonna need to find something solid, a different box that, you know, mounts to the frame. Look at that rim. 
I don't know. <laughs> that thing is rusted out like crazy. Okay. You gotta make sure you do your, you do what you're supposed to, man. Do your pre-trip because I more than likely, look at that. There's an evidence there of a leak. Okay, good thing. It might have been there before. The freaking, the TA guy that did. The brakes did not clean or replace the brakes. Okay. Looks good. It looks good on the front axle. Okay. Did you know that, I've known this a long time, but did you know these guys that are doing the uh, Amazon yard dog thing? This one too, but it's not leaking. Um, they cannot go under the truck or under the trailer whatsoever. So basically they can go like right here. They can't put their head under there. It's some type of Amazon policy. I don't know what that is. But yeah, the, you know, I'm talking about the yard dogs. And look, look how much weight we got. Nothing, you know? But anyway, I'm talking about the yard dogs. I'm talking about these guys are supposed to be doing PMC, oh not PMC, yes, but uh, uh, pre-trip on all of these equipment, you know, during before and after or whatever. But Amazon is not allowing them to go under the trailer, like peek their head under the trailer. Ain't that crazy? Check that. How are they, how are they properly doing their pre-trip? It's my question. If Amazon is not allowing them to do any of that, you know? Okay, seal number 4417, 4471. Okay. So anyway, this load, right? Well, not this load, the load going up. The load going up, I'm gonna take this. I love these things. <laughs> I'm gonna use these things. It ain't gonna hurt Amazon. Okay. Looks good, looks good. All right, I think we're good to go. We're good to go to take this trailer. You know how many times I've ran into trailers, like good loads, man, good loads I wanna haul, but I can't haul it because the trailer is no good, you know? Half of the pro half of the time, it's like Amazon is not, doesn't have problem fixing them, you know? Um, or send somebody to fix them, you know? They got contracts with, uh, you know, Travel Centers of America, TA, and they fix them all the time, you know? They go around here and fix them all the time. They're not gonna come around here and check them. That's what you're, as an operator, is supposed to be doing. But anyway, I'm getting off topic again. Okay. So anyway, let's get back on to talking about the load, right? So. The load going back, <laughs> you're gonna hate me for saying this, but this is the true reality. It's paying a dollar and 56 cents a mile. Coming back, as you saw, there's hardly anything in there, right? In the box. And if you actually come out and look at, one of the thing, one of the videos I made is like, um, can you make, can you profit off a $2 a mile? You absolutely could with Amazon. You know, if you're running Amazon, you're averaging $2 a mile, you could. Now, I know it's a dollar and 50, whatever, right? It's not, it's not freaking, <laughs> uh, what you will call it, it's, it's not $2 a mile. Well, going up, going up to where we just dropped off, we did that live load, we ran that load for four dollars and forty cents a mile my drop now i'm understanding what people are talking about when they say backhaul okay because that lane ain't nobody want to it seemed like it happens uh twice a week ain't nobody want to take it right so their the rates is a little bit higher coming from the las vegas area so you know what I will take that any day, man. I mean, it was, it's gonna be an average of 20,000 pounds, right? And uh, 
or you call it, and you're pretty much in flat land like this. They, I mean, this is not doing you any justice, but if we were taking the 99, we're on the high five right now. If we were taking the 99, it would be pretty much flat land. So, <sighs> anyway, so if we were to combine all of that, right, 2300 plus $800, uh, $800 ish or so, you're talking about 20 or $3,100 in three days. Or, no, no, two days, two shifts. $3,100 in two shifts. And we're not using our own trailer. I think that's okay. I think that's okay. As a matter of fact, I think that's great, you know? So the reason why I never come up here with Amazon because it never pays anything coming out of Las Vegas, you know? I mean, like, if you're coming out of there at $2 a mile and then you come back at $1.50, that ain't no good, you know what I mean? So, but with this kind of, uh, this freight, for some reason, I guess, Maybe Amazon is testing the waters on this, you know? Maybe they're, they're starting to do uh, brokerage loads, you know? They're starting to pull brokerage loads. We'll see. Or they're trying to brokerage loads, you know? We'll see. I mean, they got enough trailers for it, right? I mean, they can support it, that's for sure. So I don't see why they wouldn't. And, and I'm pretty sure they can, like, they can, uh, they have a lot of room to talk, you know? They can secure contracts, that's for sure. So I think, I think it's a beautiful thing if they do it, you know? The only thing um, I would say that I had some issues with this particular load, it was that, okay, so at the, at the receiver, at delivery, they had the point set to where, like I'm talking about on, on the relay, they had the point set at the employee parking area which is okay and not good at the same time because it's another about a thousand foot. You turn too early a thousand foot before you get to the point. So the relay app doesn't capture your arrival. So it doesn't let you move on. That's the only thing I would say uh, that uh, maybe they need to refine Amazon wise. They need to refine why um, on, on how they do the app. You know what I mean? Because like I said, it just would not let me move on to the next step because that's how Amazon is, is right? Right? It's just, you follow a step on the app. That's all it is. So, but anyway, it would not let me move on to the next step. Therefore, I had to walk to where the point was. So the app recognizes me that I'm there and then it will allow me to do the check-in, do the trailer number and all of these other things, you know? So, also another thing is like, uh, um, I am gonna be putting in for a layover on this load. So I think I sh with that extra two hours, actually it was about two and a half hours. So I should be getting about $150 in layover. I know it's not great, but it's something, right? We just sitting there, so I'm, I'm gonna file for that. I'm gonna dispute that on uh, on the next statement. They should approve. I think they should approve like three hours because if I remember correctly, to the lowest 30, it will. Uh, you can file. Like as long as you pass that within the hour late. So let's say you're at two and a half, two hours and 20 minutes. If you're at two hours and 20 minutes, then you can file for three hours. You know what I mean? I think it, my understanding when I read the uh, the rules, it was something like that. Anyway, yeah, that's what we're, uh, that's what we're doing. Hopefully, hopefully this continues, believe it or not, because like, I mean, this is amazing. You know what I mean? Look at this load, you know, it's like, I didn't even check the weight on the bill, on the, on the bill lading, but I bet you it's less than 6,000 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> and I can feel that it is light, you know? Uh, so we should be doing amazing in fuel. I, I believe we're gonna be doing about seven and a half, you know, probably more, but we'll see. 
So, you know, I mean, and, and, and the best part about it, the best part about it is that we are home every other night. You know what I mean? We are home every other night. And also, also now, we have the trailer sitting at the yard. So, if a load pops up, you know what I mean? Hey, we're going to, say, Los Angeles paying like $4 a mile. And I know for a fact that I can get another one coming back to Las Vegas, $4 a mile. I'll be happy with that. See, the reason why I don't do that now is because it's not consistent. You can never get loads consistently coming out of Vegas, you know? That's the only problem with, that's the only flood without plan. That's why I, you know, um, your, your, your growth is gonna take a hit. Your mileage pay is, uh, is amazing, right? But your growth is gonna take a hit. And with all of these expenses, we cannot, you know, take too much of a hit on our gross, you know? So, um, anyway, don't you guys just love just middle of California right here? We're on the I-5, 99 is down that way. It's about probably 20 miles down that way. I love this part. I normally would take the 99. I like driving through the 99 because I feel like I'm closer to the trees. You know, see, like me, I grew up in the farm in the Philippines, so I like, I kind of like this kind of view. You know what I mean? Just open field, nothing but field and field and field for miles and miles as far as the eyes can see. Okay, we just got done taking a break, made us some coffee, and now we're back out on the road. We're gonna take a 30 minute uh, around Barstow area, I believe. And then we're gonna be close to home. See, this is why I'm so like excited about this, you know, it's just, it's gonna keep me in the house, you know? I would, I would trade anything that'll keep me in the house consistently, okay? But really without a contract, you can't really just be like, consistently be making, you know, good money, good money, not, crappy money, good money, okay? Like, you can do contracts with Amazon, right? The blocks. But they hardly any pay over, you know, a uh, dollar. You might make a dollar eighty a mile when it's all said and done with that, okay? But the problem with that is that they, they freaking... Continue on I-5 South for six miles. The way they got it set up, they got you limited to doing um, what you might call it, two blocks a week, you know? And if you're doing two blocks a week, uh, you know, you're gonna be grossing like 4,500 after, no, no, 4,800 after fuel surcharge. And you're so tired with that after those days, you know what I mean? It's just, that's why I was like, oh man, you know what, forget that, you know? That's West. That's why I was like, you know, uh, I mean, you, you could do it. It's going to be easier, but grossing 4,800 a week and you're going to be basically working at night and it's going to be so tough, man. Working at night for me is so hard. I don't know why I used to be able to do it, but it's just nowadays it's just so difficult for me to stay up, really. So, but yeah, that's where... Um, that's where we are, and I believe with if we incorporate this lane, right, this lane we just did, if we can incorporate this lane with the rest of our week and pull like step deck loads, you know what I mean? I think we can easily run up 6,000 grows for a week and still be within the house, you know what I mean? like. Probably within that one week, I'd still be at the house like, you know, four nights out of those, out of that week. You know what I'm saying? So I would trade that any day to say grossing 7K a week, even consistently. But I know like if you can, if you, as you can tell, we cannot consistently grow 7K a week because of, you know, the dead zones and whatnot and holidays and whatnot. You know what I'm saying? So. Like, you just can't do that. 
you know, I would even take, I would even consider like 5K, grossing 5K a week if it's gonna keep me in the house. You know what I'm saying? No matter where that come from, comes from, you know? So if we can like, if we can run a couple of times to Los Angeles and then back, you know what I mean? That's, that could actually be, you could, if I could find one load out of Vegas, like let's say it requires a ramp, let's say that load requires me, uh, or is a $1,200 run to Los Angeles, that's gonna be over $4 a mile and then come back, you know what I mean? Uh, to Vegas, spend a night in Los Angeles, come back to Vegas, and and uh, and make another 16 or 1700. That puts us around 3k for that trip. Well, actually 2900, 2800 for that trip. That's okay. You know what I mean? And then we can incorporate this lane that we just did. That's gonna put us to four days of work. Yeah, four days of work for the week, and still grow 6,000. You know what? That's not bad. I will take that any day of the week. We'll see. We'll see how it works. We'll see. That's basically the dream scenario. <laughs> um, man, the market is tough right now. So, but definitely a dream scenario. Now, on the West Coast, over here in this area, the spot market looks very, very, very enticing. That's all I'm going to say. We will see y'all in the next video. Oh,